I do really, really like using comparable companies or precedent transactions, comps analysis, uh, you know, we call it for short, um, you know, but there are uh, some significant drawbacks. Uh, the, the biggest one is... Hello, welcome to this episode of What's New at CFI. My name is Ryan Spindelin, Senior Vice President of Training and Curriculum. So today we're joined by my fellow subject matter expert, Mr. Jeff Schmidt. So hello, Jeff. How are you going today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thanks ever so much for asking. And today we're talking about a new course that you've created, and the course is called Comparable Valuation Fundamentals. I, I hope I've got that name right. So mm -hmm. Jeff, um, as a one of our SMEs responsible for our FMVA program, can you just explain a bit of background? Why did we create this course and what's new with it? Great question. So as we develop courses, we're always constantly reviewing learner feedback and incorporating that feedback when we create new courses. And valuation is one of the most important topics in finance. And it's obviously a huge part of the FMVA program as well. So what we wanted to do with this course, we wanted to create a course that addresses things that we've learned along the way from learner feedback, uh, as well as making it a bit more user friendly for new learners that don't have as much finance experience. So one of the big differences uh, we already have a comparable valuation course, but comparable valuation fundamentals, uh, we're not using real life companies or real life transactions. Uh, real life companies, real life trans uh, transactions can really complicate things uh, and obscure uh, the fundamentals that we're trying to teach. So we have some made up companies and it's a made up and a made up transaction as part of this new course that's just a little easier to digest if you are brand new to this. So um, again, we still show you a typical layout of how companies report numbers on the income statement or the balance sheet or the cash flow statement. Uh, but we don't have all of the uh, real world complications that we do in our existing course that's called Comparable Valuation Analysis. Brilliant. All right, Jeff, that's that's a fantastic explanation and rationale. And as you say, you know, our student feedback is so important to us here at CFI, and we take mm -hmm. um, the feedback that we get really, really um, seriously. It's very, very valuable. Um, and it's a great uh, demonstration, this course, of how we take that feedback and we actually put it to action. So uh, to anybody that's listening to the podcast, please um, please be aware that we, we do read your feedback. We do take your feedback yes. very seriously. And, and we love getting your feedback as well. So um, please uh, mm -hmm. don't stop sending us your thoughts and, and feedback. Um, so, Jeff, what's so important about valuation and why do we spend so much time on it? So I'm a little biased, admittedly. Uh, I work, you know, I work in the FMVA program. I'm a financial modeling and valuation SME. So uh, again, maybe a little biased, but I really do think valuation is probably the most crucial or fundamental aspect of finance, and it comes up everywhere. You know, whether you're taking the FMVA or whether you're taking another certification you're still using a lot of valuation concepts. You might not know it, but you're still using a lot of valuation concepts because you're trying to figure out, do I make a loan? What's this mm. derivative worth or, or something of that nature? What's this bond worth? So we're always thinking about valuation, even if it's not, strictly speaking, in the FMVA curriculum. So uh, it's really one of the most fundamental, if not the most fundamental concept in finance. So, you know, as it applies to this course and the FMVA in particular, you know, think about it. We use valuation for investment purposes. So if we're going to buy, sell, or hold a stock or bond or invest in a project, we're going to need to do some valuation work to make that investment decision. And it's the same thing with corporations and businesses. They always think about valuation when making 
strategic decisions and corporate actions. So, you know, as an example, if a company wants to make uh, an acquisition, it's going to have to value the target company that it wants to acquire. It really needs to know that so it knows what a reasonable valuation or reasonable offer price is for that company. Alternatively, if a company, corporation is trying to dispose of a business unit or division or a business line or something of that nature, the company needs to know the value of that business line so it knows what it can expect to receive and also help formulate a plan for selling that you know, that business for, you know, close to, to, to fair value. So, uh, you know, valuation really comes up in so many different areas in finance. Yeah. Whether it be be on the corporate finance side, valuing companies, whether it be on the market side, valuing equities or bonds or derivatives, Black Scholes option pricing models, a valuation model. Mm -hmm. Valuation is is just essential to all, so much of what we do in, in finance. So, it's a really, really good point for our uh, for our listeners to take away. Now, Jeff, one of the the most things that I'm most excited about in this particular course, um, and I can see you smile because you know what I'm going to ask you about. I think um, the, it's the course um, is is really notable because we have a new feature with the Excel file grade your progress, and I know that you and another one of our SMEs, um, uh, Duncan. Uh, has been working on this. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Yes, absolutely. So this is something that we are, we're we're uh, working through with some of our more modeling intensive courses. And you'll see it first in this course. We we've rolled it out a little bit in some of the other courses, but this is really the first course where we say, "Hey, these are what these check boxes are doing. So when you take the comparable valuation fundamentals course, and as you go through it, you're going to see some, uh, I shouldn't say random check boxes or random boxes that are, they're strategically placed, but what they're doing is they're basically grading you as you go through the model. And so as you fill in some of the information in that Excel file, then the boxes will get checked off, you know, if you fill it in correctly. So again, it's just, it's an added feature that we're trying out again on some of our, uh, you know, kind of heavy Excel courses so that learners, as, as they're working through this, they can see, you know, if they're doing everything correct or if the box doesn't get checked, then there's a there's an issue that uh, you know, something something's missing. Uh, you know, a formula or maybe the number was input incorrectly. So again, it's just to give you a little guidance, say, okay, this box is checked. You can feel reasonably confident you've got the right answer. If it's not checked, even after filling it in, then there's something going on. There's something wrong. So it identifies uh, pretty much exactly where the issue is. So it's a really, really nice feature for learners to be able to you know, figure out exactly where the problem is. And there's also a little bit of a, a gamification aspect to it. So as you're working through it, it there's a sense of accomplishment, uh, getting those boxes checked off as you work through the file. Yeah. So, so there's a couple of reasons why we put that in there. Again, to help learners and also to make it a bit more fun. And again, to feel better as you're working through these models and you get these boxes checked and you're like, okay, I'm doing it. I'm doing it correctly. Yeah, oh, it's, it's a fantastic feature, and I know when uh, you and uh, our the, our other colleague, uh, our other SME, Duncan McKean, when you showed me it, and, and I had a go with it, it, it is fantastic. I absolutely love it. Uh, if you want to get all the ticks on the on the worksheet that you're working on, uh, and like you said, there's a gamification element to it. But what's mm-hmm. really really valuable, I think, is it gives you that instantaneous feedback. Yeah. So that as soon as you've made a mistake, you don't get the checkbox and you think, oh, there's a mistake here. And what you and Duncan have done really, really well is you, you've built the model so that um, if you do a mistake partway through a table or, or um, a section, the only the part that you get wrong is you don't get the check. But then even if the numbers are wrong following that, but you've done it right because you've got an earlier mistake, 
the following tick box is all tick, so you can really zone in yes. to where you've got your what made your error. So uh, it's a fantastic um, feature, um, and I'm sure our learners are going to love it as much as I do. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you, you definitely want to get all ticks, don't you? It becomes a, a bit of a, challenge, a personal challenge for you. So um, can't wait to roll it out a bit more. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, speaking of challenges, then um, my final question to you, Jeff, uh, uh, and I think you know with your with your professional background i think you're I, the ideal person to, to pose this question to what are some challenges with evaluation using comparable companies or transactions mm -hmm. so just again i'm a little biased i do really really like using comparable companies or precedent transactions comps analysis uh you know we call it for short um mm -hmm. you know but there are uh, some significant drawbacks. Uh, the, the biggest one is that no two companies or transactions are exactly alike. Mm. So there's always going to be some challenges there. Uh, so you basically have to pick the best companies and transactions using some of the criteria we discussed in the course. We, we go through uh, operational characteristics or, or business characteristics and then financial characteristics in terms of how to pick comparable companies. But again, no two companies are exactly alike. So you have to use some judgment uh, when you create a, a comp set or when you find peers to, to the company you're trying to value. So there's a lot of judgment uh, involved in that. Uh, and you do the best with what you with what you can. Sometimes there are, there are no perfect comps. So yeah. You know, again, you have to do the best you can. Uh, and, and if you're going to do a full comps analysis, you know, ideally you'd have five to 10 companies. Or if you're doing a precedent transaction analysis, ideally you'd have five to 10 transactions. But again, you know, that's kind of the, that's the goal to have five to 10 of each. Yeah. But a lot of times, that's not going to be possible, and you might have to. You might only have three peer companies or or three similar transactions. So yeah. that that's really the the biggest challenge. Yeah, valuation, the ultimate mix of art and science. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, yeah, and and that that ex that example that you've just given us, Jeff, I think um, perfectly uh, captures that sentiment. So. Right, Jeff, it's a fantastic course. I'm sure that um, our learners, particularly our learners that are um, looking to complete the FMVA, that perhaps have mm -hmm. a little less finance uh, finance background, will find this course extremely valuable. I'm really excited that, um, that yeah. you've created it. And thanks ever so much for taking time out of your busy day to come onto the podcast and give us a little of bit of an explanation about it. And hopefully... Um, I know that you've got some other exciting courses up your sleeve and you'll be back soon mm -hmm. to tell us about those. Definitely. Thank awesome. you for uh, having me. No problem at all, Jeff. All right, everybody, thanks ever so much for listening to this episode of What's New at CFI. My name's Ryan Spindolo, and I hope to have you uh, sign up again and listen to our next podcast soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the conversation. FinPod is brought to you by Corporate Finance Institute, the number one rated online provider of finance and banking training, certifications, and productivity tools.